Opal's not here if she left with Marion and Stuart. There you go. That looks pretty good. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, terrific. Thanks for the help. Sure. I, I hope you don't feel odd about staying here. No, I hope you don't feel weird about asking me to. No, I, I was just a little surprised when you said yes. Well, you're right. Somebody's got to look out after Opal's interests. Well, really, I asked you because you're so good with Uncle Palmer. You know, he doesn't listen to me. Well, that's because you don't approach him the right way with a whip and a chair. <laughs> well, you, you're very good at intimidating him. I hope you can uh, scare him into doing right by Opal. Yeah, so they can go their separate ways. And we can go ours. No harm. No foul. You know, you look just like two dinners on one plate. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. You look, um, you look pretty nice yourself. Yeah, well, thanks to you. <laughs> it's, uh, getting close to zero hour. Can I uh, offer you a ride over to Huawen? Uh, thanks, but, um... Dixie doesn't need a ride. She's going with me. <sighs> Sorry to keep you waiting, Dixie. You look spectacular. Thank you. So do you. I brought this for you. Gardenia? Yeah. Thanks. It's my favorite flower. How did you know? Well, I do my research. <laughs> uh, shall I pin it on you? Um, <laughs> you know, I'm just going to put it on my purse, okay? I'll take it. Are we ready? Uh, um, Tad, do you want to, do you want to ride? No, thanks, uh... My, my date's driving me tonight. She's got control issues. Oh. You're going with Brooke? <laughs> no. I don't believe you've had the pleasure. Oh. Shall we? Um, you know, uh, yeah, would you like to have a drink? Not if I'm driving. Oh, I'm kind of thirsty. I'd like something to sort of wet my whistle. Uh... Sparkling water? Uh, yes, thanks. Ted, do you want something? No, thanks. I think I'll, uh, I'll wait for my date. Uh, there she is now. Hey, you look gorgeous. Um, mwah, mwah. Would you be a love and keep this in your pocket, my beeper? Oh, really? Don't worry, it doesn't bite. It vibrates. Well, this evening will be a total loss. Allow me to introduce Paige Turner. I'm not making it up. Paige, this is uh, Dixie Cooney and Braden. Braden. Oh, it's Braden singular. <laughs> you mean like Cher? <laughs> Uh, Paige and I uh, met on the cutting edge. She's she's an actress. I just finished five weeks of doing Loving the Life I Live. I played a body that washed up on shore. <laughs> Brave for high tide. What's that? Charming. Oh, look, it's January already. We should be shoving off. See you at the ball. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Surely they have a coat room around here somewhere. Uh, Braden, would you look after her while I make a search? Absolutely, Mr. Courtney. I don't need looking after. <laughs> Are you sure you're up for another night of dancing? I'm fine. I just need to take my medication, that's all. Okay, well, wait right here. I'll find you a glass of water. And don't <laughs> go anywhere, okay? I can move. All right. change a thing. Oh, I got it. 
got what? Your imagination's in overdrive, Ted. I don't think so. I think you're doing the same thing to me that Uncle Palmer does to you. I beg your pardon. You are intentionally interfering with another person's life, and I think it's just as annoying and just as sneaky. Well, no one has ever accused me of being sneaky before. Well, obviously you've never been caught before. What, what, what did I do? You are intentionally torpedo in my love life in all kinds of devious little ways. Oh, that, that's pure paranoia. You know it, and I know it. Come on, admit it. You're scaring them off, aren't you? Who high school stunts like some little girl? Why would I do that? Yeah, why indeed? You know, the night at the roadside bar, everything was going along just fine. One minute, my date is as friendly as a kitten. The next minute, she's as cold as ice. And the minute after that, she's gone. Now, nothing had changed with me. I'm still the same guy, but something happened between us, and you were the only other person that was around. Maybe, what did you do to her? Maybe it was Liza. It wasn't Liza. I already asked her. Well, maybe you believed her? Why not? Liza be bragging about her. She ruined my evening. Fess up. You're the guilty party. Look, I hope you don't hold me responsible every time your social life doesn't turn out the way you'd like. You know, you're, you're not always irresistible. Well, I'm damn close. Well, my rape your type wit, boyish good looks, and godlike body. Something is going on, Dixie. One minute Paige was here, now she's nowhere to be found. Where'd she go? I don't know. Are you sure? Are you absolutely sure? I don't think so. I think you're toying with my social life, and it's fairly obvious why. Oh, really? Why? Because. No matter how much we deny it, there's obviously something that's still between us. I can feel it, and so can you. Can't you? Nothing. I had nothing to do with your date you are such disappearing. You're a bad liar. Look at you. No contact. You turn away. You start to stutter. It's pathetic. I'm. I'm. You say I'm a liar. I'm just exactly what liar? I'm saying. Yes. <laughs> your social life has nothing to do with me. My social life has everything to do with you. I don't make a move lately. Doesn't have something to do with you. Oh, now you're blaming me for your problems. Yeah. I would have never moved into Cortland Manor if it wasn't for your little Ari about love and family. You, you moved into um, Cortland Manor the because tie that Opal, binds families me. together, the bond that grows from first. You remember that? Part yeah, of yeah, my yeah. family is Uncle Palmer. No, well, don't be ridiculous. Look, whatever, wherever that speech came from, it was about a lot more than just Opal and Palmer. Come on, Dixie, I know it. I can tell there's something going on with you, and it's something that's major. Well, my, my family is in turmoil. That's pretty no, major. No, no, that's not it. It's something about you and me. I know it. I can feel it. I, I... You're reading too much into this. You're trying so hard to avoid telling me. You know I'm gonna find out. Listen, I'm... I'm glad that you moved in to Cortland Manor, but it is for Opal's sake, not mine. It's, I mean, life is too short. Let's stop wasting time. Tell me what's going on. Tell you what's going on? That's not a simple request. You no, know, obviously it's not. Look, when we had those days in New York, they were they were wonderful days, okay? And what do you want me to say? I, I don't know. I'm not the one with the problem. Look, honey, when you didn't show up on top of the Statler, you had obviously decided that, 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 mm, that you could deal without me, right? That, that's, that's reasonably simple. No, it's not simple. It's not simple. It's incredibly complicated, okay? Uh, Dixie, Dixie, I've been looking all over for you. Perfect. Right on cue. Well, you know, they were having this uh, raffle, and, uh, well, we don't have to pack our bags because we're not going to Aruba. Oh, darn, I lost track of time. You know? That's not our song, but it's close enough. Let's go dance. No, it's not your song. Excuse us. The lady and I were talking. And now, now we're finished talking, okay? I'm sorry your date didn't show up, Ted, but um, I really do want to dance. By all means. said that's the last thing you'd ever do. I know. It's just that when we get together, there's something wonderful between us, and I just, I just love him so much. So much that you'd ruin his life to tell him the truth? 
You know, I thought you were determined to save him the pain of loving and losing you again. I know that's what I said. Well, that was very, very honorable of you. To protect the man you love. It's the right thing to do, right, isn't it? You made a very, very difficult and loving decision, Dixie. I think you should stick by it. Be strong. Just, just let him go.